while we do admit the importance of women in our society and that their contribution is vital to our progress, we are still far behind when it comes to realizing that our women are to be treated equally, that they are second to none. Thus, in this context, this programs such as these programs and events like today can help continue with the discourse and in spreading awareness like investing our time and resources on women. This investment can be done through education, skill development, economic empowerment, giving them access to decision-making roles, etc. In fact, I'm very much certain that we will continue to witness the rise of Naga women in every aspect. And it is immediate that we will have to integrate women into our decision-making process and bodies. This is relevant to all sectors of society, from private to public sectors. In the social sphere, we can see many young women doing their best to uplift the society. Apart from taking part in church and the civil organization, the women take part in, we can see women in all spheres and aspects of life. All the female members active, taking active parts in various political organizations. You are all an inspiration to the young Naga girls who dream of being in your shoes one day and making policies for the benefit of our people. Even in the economic spheres, our young Naga women are provide, proving to be some of the best interveners and business persons in the state, providing employment to hundreds of persons, hundreds of local unemployed youths. All these examples I have mentioned are testament to the argument that inclusion of women in leadership and decision-making roles are the integral are integral to the process of our Naga society. Investment in women through education, skill, edu skill development, especially leadership guidance, is the constructive way to build a progressive society all together. It is my hope that we will see more and more women taking part in contribution to the progress of Nagaland in the days to come. Thank you for taking your precious time and to come here in ministries even. And may we continue to consciously invest in women. I extend my warmest welcome and greetings to all and wish you all a happy International Women's Day. God bless all our Naka women. Thank you. On a significant occasion like this, it is an empowering initiative for key departments, missions, commission, working on women issues in the state to come forward on, on one platform and celebrate the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women. We have the Department of Social Welfare, the Department of Women Resource Development, the Nagaland State Commission for Women, the State Rural Livelihood Mission, and the Mission Shakti, which jointly collaborated together for one common cause in organizing this program today. This is also a call to action for accelerating women's equality. This year's United, theme, United Nations theme for International Women's Day 2024 says that, uh, says, invest in women, accelerate process, progress, which calls for a healthier, safer, and more equal world for all, which can be brought about by investing in women as it speeds up the transition towards change. In a world facing multiple crises, achieving gender equality is more vital than ever. Our nodal ministry, the Ministry of Women and Child, Government of India, has been emphasizing on the convergence model on various schemes and programs. One significant scheme dedicated to empowerment of women, which the Government of India and the Ministry of Women and Child has introduced, is the Mission Shakti program, which is the umbrella scheme for safety, security, and empowerment of women. We also have put some information booth here with many uh, flyers where I would encourage all of you to visit and pick up your flyers and go through and see what the scheme offers. Our Women Health Life 181 team will also, they are also there. They will provide with information on various schemes of our department and other collaborating departments as well. Government of India is also vigorously pressing for observation of the International Women's Week in all the states, 
starting from today. So they have advised us to have intense outreach programs and engaging activities to reflect and amplify on the issues that come in the way of women's empowerment and realization of gender equality. Nagaland State is also observing this significant day in all the districts today and for the next coming one week. This year, as you all have, may have seen in the program, we have a series of felicitations and awards. Today, on this occasion, we are felicitating women in the political sphere, women in, who are NGOs and who have, uh, who have done so much for the society, and also the SSG women achievers who have contributed significant, significantly towards the upliftment and empowerment of women in different fields. I congratulate every woman who will be acknowledged today for your achieve, immense achievements and contributions towards the society. We also celebrate all those women who have been contributing in your own way, which may not be uh, visible to anyone or to the outside world, but those who have been contributed in your own way from all walks of life, as working women, as entrepreneurs, as leaders, and even as a homemaker. We are encouraged to have with us today the State Commissioner for People with Disabilities, Shimati Gitono Nakro. She is uh, an example of someone who is very passionate about her cause because she is very passionate about the inclusive development of uh, people who are differently abled. Inclusive development is a continuous process. A society needs more awareness and understanding on the disability issues. It should be a collective endeavor to be more inclusive in our approach to make all the developmental activities more accessible for the differently able to. Let us come together to transform these challenges into opportunities and collectively strive to create a better tomorrow with a common goal, empowerment for all. Ensuring women's rights and girls' rights across all aspects of life is the only way to secure a just and a happy and a progressive society. Happy International Women's Day once again. Thank you. to kindly come on stage and receive the honor. Madam, this is an, an acknowledgement for admiration and respect for your trailblazing success. Our history-making politician, our first one of the first two women to be elected to the Nagaland's Legislative Assembly the first Women Minister of Nagaland. Thank you, ma'am. May you continue to inspire. Uh, next, may I request uh, Mrs. Kakeli Jakalu, mother of uh, Srimati Hekani Jakalu, to kindly come and receive the honor on her behalf. A lawyer by profession, Srimati Hikani Jakalu created history by becoming one among the first two women to be elected into Nagaland's Legislative Assembly. She is also a social entrepreneur, founder of Midnet, a social entrepreneurial success. She also received the Nari Shakti Puraskar from the President of India. Thank you, ma'am. Um, though she could not be here with us today, uh, we would also like to acknowledge um, and felicitate our first women MP, um, Srimati Pangnong Konyak, another
another trailblazing politician from our state. May I request uh, Ma'am Nini Konya to kindly come and receive it on her behalf. highest civilian award in the country. Our celebration will be complete without letting these women achievers know that we are proud of them. This is Nido Nyo Angami, Padmashri awardee for her contribution towards social service in the year 2000. She is a pioneer of the Naga Mothers Association, a pioneering social activist. She selflessly served the society in various capacities, both at the state and national level. A woman with an indomitable spirit, she inspires with her relentless service. Santilati Younger received a Padma Shri for her contribution in the field of art in the year 2008. She is an advocate of women empowerment, widely acknowledged for her work on conservation of culture and heritage and promotion of art and crafts in the Northeast region. Dr. P. Kilansangla, a Padma Shri awardee for literature and education in the year 2014, is known for her extensive contribution in the education and social arena of the state. She is also the first woman from the state to become a UPSC member. Nagran's noted Gandhian. Sri Mati Lantina Autakar was awarded the Padma Shri for her endeavors in social work. She demonstrated extraordinary courage to embrace Gambian values in changed times. She is also the first Naga woman who trained as a Gambian volunteer. Next, we have Mrs. Ni Huñoz Sorje, ever known for her original artwork and her mission to teach the disappearing art to the next generation. A true champion of the line, renowned for the meticulous details and patterns in traditional women. Awardee for social work in the year 1981. She's a prominent educationist and an active social worker, loved for her dedication and service to the community. Two other Padmashri awardees. Late Professor Tamsila Au was an awardee of the Padma Shri for her contribution in the field of literature and education, a renowned academician and prolific author and ethnographer. She has made valuable contribution towards women's empowerment and was instrumental in promoting Naga culture. Uh, Srimati, Mrs. Uh, Sano Vamozo, she also could not be here with us today due to some unavoidable circumstances. this beautiful day and for bringing us all to this International Women's Day program to celebrate the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women, which the day also marks a call to action for accelerating gender parity. Marked annually on 8th March, and which is one of the most important days of the year, 
The Nagaland State Commission for Women Awards was instituted in the year 2021. This award is presented on the occasions of International Women's Day. This being the third edition, 2024, this award is the third edition. The second was given in the year 2022. 2023, we could not keep because this uh, NSC uh, team was not in the place. So with great hope and optimism as a matter of pride to have many selfless, committed women, the NSC Debo Award is given to women who have contributed significantly towards the upliftment of women in various fields and also towards the safety and security of women in the state of Nagaland. Women in general and exceptionally Naga women are doing a very great job in many fields as we celebrate the life-changing and motivating contributions and achievements of women in our society. This, today, the Indonesian Women's Day 2024, I take this privilege and pride in announcing the three recipients of the Nagaland State Commission for Women Award. We have Smithy Sri, uh, Shirley La, serving in the Kion Women Organization and field in charge Samator and Dunsam self employed Women Association. We also have Ms. Nimne Temhenda, provider Runaway Nagaland, and also we have Ms. Kate Ila, director Protocols Homes. They have immensely contributed to the society and made positive changes in empowering, empowering the women at the grassroots. Srimati C. Tsarila, may I request you to kindly come and receive the Nagaland State Commission for Women's Award 2024. A home-based worker leading YPASD, the local women's organization in her town in Shamathor. She is making profound impacts on our women folk through her initiative. Few among them are livelihood interventions, the dig digital literacy, skill development trainings, especially for the dropout young girls. Her selfless dedication is making impacts in our community and beyond. A true inspiration for all. Srimati Nengni Tham Hengma to come and receive the Nagaland State Women's Commission Award 2024. She is the founder of Runway Nagaland, a trailblazer in the contemporary tribal jewelry scene, integrating it into the mainstream fashion. She is also co founder of Runway Banana Community, the creator of the trending banana fiber products of our women folk. She is equipping our women with valuable skills to thrive in their communities and contribute to the local economy. So our next party, Ma'am K. Ila, cannot be here with us due to some unforeseen events, but um, she is the director of Podicles Home, a true champion of our vulnerable women and children. She has taken on this leadership role courageously and compassionately in addressing even life-threatening situations concerning women in distress, a true inspiration for all women. The base of Rural Livelihoods mission is its SHG women, the self-help group women. And in their own way, our SHG women are creating a huge impact in uplifting not only their own household, but the society at large. In line with our team, invest in women, accelerate progress. I think we have a lot of success stories if we are to count. And every SAG woman has a success story to tell. This year, we are very grateful for getting a platform like this, a huge platform at the state level to felicitate some of our women achievers. The first category of awards, we have the Best Self-Help Group, the Tumjin SAG of Chichuimpang Village under Ompango North RT Block in Wangchong District. Formed on 30th August 2019, and despite the COVID-19 challenges faced by this newly formed group, it has made tremendous progress 
from adherence to the day and our limb principles to each member having individual bank accounts, 100% enrollment in PMSBY and PMJAY, the group has made great strides by developing not only their group but each member household as well, inspiring other SEGs to work towards all round development. Thank you. The next category of award, we have the best performing village level organization. The first one is Azike Vielo of Sampur Village, Long Matra Block, Kifiri District. Formed on 22nd September 2019, the Azike Vielo, comprising of 15 self help groups with 118 member households, is emerging as a sustainable institution providing capacity building support, financial and livelihood services. The VLO is contributing to social capital generation as well. Thank you. The next VLO, the next best performing village level organization is the Ketakelie, VLO of Jakama Village, Jakama RD Block, Bohima. Formed on 15 December 2015, the VLO comprises of 13 self help groups with 92 household member households. They hold the distinction of maintaining impeccable records and documentation of the various works being done, especially contributing appreciably to the livelihoods of the member households. They also undertake a lot of social activities, including in areas of health and nutrition, sanitation, and support to the elderly and persons with disabilities, facilitating access to entitlements and collaboration with key village functionaries. And for the uh, last group in the uh, last category in the group awards, we invite the best performing cluster level federation. Federation is a federation of all the SAGs under a block or, or, or a cluster. So uh, for this year, the best performing cluster level federation is the Jaffa P Tanuko block level federation, which is from Jaffa block. Jaffa P Tanuko block level federation. Formed on 10th August 2016 with a vision to improve the health, livelihoods and uh, quality to empower members and achieve the dream of happy women, happy family and happy village. The Jaffa P. Tanuko Block Level Federation is passionately nurturing and strengthening over 2,000 households covering 12 villages and is providing uh, various kinds of services. The CLF was also registered as Jaffa P. Women Livelihoods and Credit Cooperative Society under Cooperative Society Act of 2017 and they aspire to ensure multiple areas of development by bringing positive impact in the life of women and their families through inclusive development. For the individual categories, the first award is Most Successful Credit Linkage. Most Successful Credit Linkage, her name is Viketuno Edith Utsa. She is from Setsu Zubza Block. Viketuno is a divorce to her family. She started a small shop. been very successful in accessing entitlements and also uh, expanding her enterprises. Thank you. Yeah. The next category we have what we call gender champion. Gender champion, her name is Weprin Sohokupa from Kutsuro Block. Weprin Sohokupa is a widow with five children. She is a member of Kebumi SHG. Having been exposed to various capacity building programs organized under the mission, she got the courage to speak out about representation and participation of women in her village's highest decision-making body, the village council. She mobilized women in her village, discussed with them about fair representation, and the women of her village also realized. And now the village council has made the decision to include two members for every tenure, and since 2016, uh, the village council under the village has had two women members. I think this is a, a, an achievement, a rare achievement in our state. Yeah, the next category we have uh, under NRLM, we have something called the Lagpati Didi Initiative, which, which is an initiative by our Honorable Prime Minister of India. So under this Lagpati Initiative, various uh, capacity building, support uh, in terms of uh, services, financial services, linkages are given. So under this we have 
one called Pendang in La Weo from Sumukitima blog. With an unemployed husband, her biggest distress was providing quality education for her four children. She hails from Birazuma village. She joined NSRLM SAG in 2014 and has been a very active member. She runs a hostel and apart from that, she undertakes various life foods activities, uh, thereby serving as an inspiration to many women. And uh, next we have most enterprising SAG woman. Uh, her name is Rachel Maru. She's from uh, Lasumi village of Futsuro Club. Peg District, hailing from a humble family of cultivator parents, uh, and uh, she's the seventh of nine children. She's married to Prewe Maru and has a five-year-old child. She started her journey by opening a petty shop in April of 2018, and with the revenue earned, she has been increasing, expanding, and you will all be surprised to know that the turnover from her uh, initiatives and the general support that she's running for the past two years is over 48 lakhs. So she's a truly an, uh, enterprising woman and an inspiration to many. Thank you. We have most inspiring placement. So under NRLM, we also have DDU GKY, which is a skilling uh, program where youth from the villages, from the rural areas, are identified, selected, and sent for training and placement. So uh, under this category from Didi Ujikawai, we have Easter Ponyak. She is currently at her uh, place of work, which is in Gujarat, but her mother is here to receive on her behalf. Easter Ponyak uh, is from Tizid village of Mon district. Um, due to financial issues, she could not pursue her education beyond the eighth standard. So when she learned about Pinnacle Skills implementing the DUGKY scheme and its benefit, she was convinced to join. And now she's working as an assistant beauty therapist and taking care of her family back home. A brief introduction to the Mighty Fest, which we are also celebrating today, along with the International Women's Day. Mighty Fest was first initiated during 2017 with the purpose to celebrate achievement of our local women in all spheres of life, and also to celebrate their huge contribution towards the socio-economic development of the state as a whole. Sadly, most of these contributions by women are unseen, go unnoticed, and unappreciated. We are talking about mothers, homemakers, entrepreneurs, farmers, artisans, etc. And the like who quietly keep the economy of the state going behind the scene. In the general election 2023, as other speakers have already shared, women have broken barriers and made history, within wherein two women have been elected as member of Nagaland Legislative Assembly to the 14th Nagaland Legislative Assembly. For the very first time, I, on behalf of everyone present today, congratulate Madam Salah Nujuse and Madam Hakani Jakhalu once again for their tremendous achievement in the political arena. Mighty Face came about from the word Mighty in Nagamis, which was first coined by the Department of Women Resource Development in 2009 to mean women or females. It also means my home or my platform where women can come and work together in their socio-economic upliftment by taking up various livelihood activities. The word my in English means my or mine. However, the word key is a common term for all major never tribes to mean home or house. And as such, 
my key or my home or my house. My key platform provides lively good opportunities to start up entrepreneurs, farmers and cultivators, artisans, etc. Aid is given to our women through provision of required resources to start livelihood activities, skill development, and skill upgradation programs. Promotion of goods, marketing avenues, and through other intervention wherever possible. The fabric products that are available in the market are produced by skilled women on paid per production basis. Presently, there are over 70 different fabric and related products that are being produced through this initiative. Besides this, the mighty food products that are being made available through sourcing of raw materials for women farmers and sourcing of semi-processed goods from women entrepreneurs. The final processing standardization, packaging, and marketing processes are done through the food processing and resource center based in Maribor. Presently 14 food products which are all FSSAI registered are available in the market. The coming together of uh, departments and agencies to collaboratively organize today's event is also a very good initiative in providing yet another platform to promote our women and their products. And I thank the Department of Social Welfare for taking this initiative and making it happen. I would like to invite all present to visit and encourage the Mikey Stone and the other stores put up by our partnering agencies after the formal program is over. With this word, I conclude my speech and I wish all the women and girls share a very happy International Women's Day and also request the, participants, the participation of all in the Mighty Fest to make it a meaningful and productive event. Thank you. As we continue our celebration, we are all excited to hear from our trailblazing achiever, our special guest for the day. May I call Sri Mati Salutunyo Kusei, Honorable Minister, Women Resource Development and Horticulture, to please come on stage to address us and also to inaugurate the Mighty Fest. I thank this day to God for coming and being in your midst on this wonderful day, International Women's Day. My hardest greetings as we celebrate International Women's Day, the incredible achievements and contributions of women around the world. I believe that five departments of the state namely Department of Social Welfare, Department of Women Resource Development, Nagaland State Commission for Women, Nagaland State Rural Livelihood Mission, and SHEW Mission Shakti have come together to celebrate this day. All these are women-centric departments with various programs and policies to equip and uplift women of our state. As we celebrate today, I stand here before you with a compelling topic that has the perspective to transform the world as we know it. A simple yet powerful theme, invest in women, accelerate progress. Throughout history, women have been the backbone of society, resiliently carrying the weight of their roles with grace, intelligence, and unwavering determination. From taking care of their families and nurturing the next generation, to driving economic growth and leading in various sectors, women have proven time and time again that they possess incredible potential. Yet for so long, they continue to face countless 
barriers and inequalities that hinder their progress and limit their impact. The time has come to recognize the untapped potential that lies within women and invest in them. To provide them with equal opportunities, resources, and support so that they can thrive and succeed. For most, we need to invest in girls' education, which is the only catalyst for positive change. When we educate a girl, we educate a nation. By investing in their education, we are investing in a brighter future for women. Subsequently, as we all know, economic empowerment is vital in achieving gender equality. When women have access to capital, financial services, and job opportunities, they become powerful drivers of economic growth. By investing in women entrepreneurs, we can unlock a vast potential for innovation, creativity, and economic prosperity. When women flourish in the business world, their successes inspire and create a ripple effect, shaping a more equitable society for all. For example, UNET, by our very own advisor, Hekane Jakalu Kense. Healthy women lead to healthy families, healthy communities, and a healthier world, and therefore, we need to invest in women's health and well-being. Women bear the burden of reproductive health and often face unique challenges related to maternal care and access to health care services. To empower our women, we need to create more awareness among our women folk on health care services, gender-based violence, gender disparities, etc. Lastly, on the most important aspect is recognizing the importance of investing in women's leadership. Women bring diverse perspectives, empathy, and collaboration to the decision-making table. When women are equally represented in positions of power and influence, policies are more inclusive, societies become more just, and progress is accelerated. It is crucial to support and mentor aspiring women leaders, provide them with the necessary training, and create an environment that allows them to break through the glass ceiling. We must remember that investing in women is not just a matter of morality. It is a matter of social and economic progress. When we invest in women, we invest in a better tomorrow for everyone. A society where opportunities are equal, achievements are celebrated, and progress knows no boundaries. I urge both men and women to recommit ourselves today to invest in women and continue to make the efforts and provide them with the tools they need to succeed, to accelerate progress, create a more sustainable future, and reach new heights of an equitable society. Thank you. Happy Women's Day to everyone here, all the women. And thank you so much to all the gents, ladies and gentlemen who are here with us. We are very happy seeing you all here with us, especially our Commissioner and Secretary. Uh, first of all, I want to thank God for giving us this day, a beautiful day where this day is set aside for women, 8th March every year. I want to thank our special guest. We are very proud to see her live here with us. And thank you so much, Sri Wampong Konyak, Advisor, Social Welfare, for being with us.
picture of our very friendly media person who are always there to support us and uh, uh, always coming forward. I would also like to uh, say that as part Section, Social Welfare Department, please join.